Hey, how's it going everybody? So I decided I wanted to do a video on Open Media Vault. Open Media Vault is a really, really cool um, administration tool for your, your network attached storage. Um, it's probably one of the, the better ones that's 100% open source. Um, with that said, I mean, there are other open source alternatives such as Unraid or FreeNAS. Well, I mean, uh, I shouldn't say open source because some of them are actually proprietary. But just, there's different options for um, network attached storage. And I think FreeNAS is probably one of the most popular um, just because it has all the integration that you could probably possibly ever want and it has the potential of being something that's usable uh, in the enterprise space and uh, you know it, it's just it's it has the whole uh, ZFS thing uh, going for it uh, which now is less of a big deal because we have butterfs or BTRFS whatever you want to call it and so I mean I just wanted to review open media vault um, because it's something that I really appreciate um, for a number of reasons. Um, number one is it runs on uh, Debian base. So it's something I'm really familiar with. Uh, there, I've, I've used RPM based uh, servers like CentOS or even uh, Red Hat. And so far in my experience, since I've used Debian so much, it's just easier for me to, to know what the system can do, how to install the packages, where the configuration files are. I mean, most, time, most of the times that stuff uh, translates pretty well in other distros as well. But there's always a little bit of differences. So you have to relearn a lot of these small things, which is, it just takes some of your time. So it's, it's not a huge deal, but it's also not something I want to deal with right now. So... Yeah, I'm just going to go over um, some of the features and some of the stuff that I personally use it for. Right now, it's mainly used as a place to just store all my files. Now, I, I previously did a video about um, Synology. I've, I've tried two different Synology devices, and so far I just can't... Um, the, the form factor of Synology is fantastic. I love the form factor. They're so... They're so small, and everything is just so well developed, right? So it's it's easy to understand why people would love it. Um, but since it doesn't have the the base Debian or you know that the, the 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 distribution that I'm the most comfortable with, it does add a little bit more complexity. I have to go and look up how to do certain things that I normally would just maybe apt install something or. You know, just change a configuration file in Apache or Nginx or, or something like that to get to get it to do what I want it to do. So, yeah, it's, the, Synology is open source. I think technically, um, I have looked at it, although I haven't personally tried to install their DSM software on a different machine. But I think you can do it. So, I mean, that's props to them, and it is kind of like a Linux success story, so to speak. But yeah, um, FreeNAS, Synology, those are two different things. So with this, with this uh, Open Media Vault, Open Media Vault, it's kind of a bad name, really, because, um, I mean, yes, it can be your Open Media Vault, but it can also just be your NAS because it, it is just Linux. So it's really just an interface to manage your <laughs> your Linux RAID or your your union file system, merger FS, uh, you can have all sorts of different um, drive configurations and it does manage a lot of them pretty well um, so far from my experience. I just installed uh, a bunch of 14 terabyte drives and I took out all my old, like I had, to, I originally when I set up this server, it was like an old Xeon uh, uh, processor that I had that when I was using for um, some web hosting stuff but I kind of just stopped using it for that and I had a bunch of old drives from you know external drives to just old drives that were inside my computer and I slapped them all into this uh, system and I was using uh, merger FS at the time 
And basically what the merger FS will do is allow you to add all of those four gigabyte drives or, or random size drives together so that you have one gigantic disk. And then you can do further things like uh, add a cache drive, add, um, add a failover drive, add, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. Um, kind of similar to Unraid, except this is all open source. This is just Debian under the hood. Um, this is a PHP application, which is another thing that I'm very familiar with. So if I ever wanted to, I could potentially hack on the interface and submit patches upstream and all sorts of stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so this, this has the same kind of capabilities as Unraid. Uh, that's why I think the name Open Media Vault is just kind of... It, it makes people think it's like some kind of multimedia center thing when it's not. That's not really what it is. It's really, I mean, but I guess it's, it all depends on the person's definition. I just think it's not a very good name anyway. But yeah, so with that said, I have some file systems in here. Um, some of them are drives that I'm going to take out. I'm going to take this one out. It's going to be a part of uh, a different server that's probably going to be my Jellyfin server. Um, but then I also have like uh, another EXT drive, which is what I'm using for project IE 4K, just to have a fast SSD because um, having an SSD for some of the assets that need to be upscaled is just way better. It's way faster than a spinning disk. And uh, that one's probably going to be inside the, the AI machine that I'm going to be building. And then for the main, that's that one gigantic RAID system that I built. I, I got a RAID five I believe is what I did let me check so we got we can go to raid management oh it's raid 10 sorry so you can go to your raid 10 and you can see uh, how I created it it's it's very it's very intuitive and simple but basically uh, you you select the raid that you want uh, it does offer you know the ways for you to select your discs you can name it whatever you want and I think even when I brought it over from Synology, from when I was doing my testing, because I had these same drives in Synology, it recognized the Synology RAID right off the bat. So if you did set something up in some other system, it is transferable. And that's one of the reasons why I kind of liked um, the merger FS stuff as well, because if a uh, drive fails, you still have all the other, other stuff on the other drives. It's just basically pooling them all together so you don't have to you know, know which drive your information is stored on. It's just one gigantic drive, basically, but then it's not RAID. So with the RAID 10, you get some added benefits. That's why I went with this one. Read, write speeds are a little bit better. Um, you do lose a lot of capacity, though, so that is something to consider. Um, but let's just go over the, the software real fast. So they have general settings. I've installed the one of the plug-in systems. So this is something you actually have to install yourself. Uh, it's this OMV Extras. You can install different repos. Uh, you can run Docker directly from uh, Open Media Vault. You can do it you know, different ways. There's different ways to do it. Uh, a lot of people, they'll use Portainer, which is like a Docker management interface. Uh, although, I mean, I guess you could just you know, you could use a bunch of different stuff. You could, if you know how to hack on Docker Compose files, you could use that and just run it directly uh, from the terminal. Set up rules for auto restart or whatever, and and it would, you'd be perfectly fine. You don't have to have uh, Portainer installed or something like that. But it's, you know, if you wanted to, they they do allow you to install a lot of this stuff pretty easily. I mean, Portainer has its own um, own button right here at the top. As yacht, I mean, I haven't even messed with yacht. I don't even know what that is yet, <laughs> honestly. Um, but yeah, it has all the normal things that you'd want to be able to modify on uh, your Linux system. So power management, uh, monitoring, certificates. If you need to install some SSL certificates, if this is going to be something that is is exposed on the internet and you want the traffic to be encrypted via HTTPS, and you don't want your browser to give the user uh, a warning you could use something like um, encrypt let's encrypt you know because they have those free SSL certificates um, maybe I'll do a video on that later on but it's super easy uh, to, to manage you can update all of your your plugins that you have installed and and the disk system so it's, it's basically just a Linux management system you can manage your groups your users your shared folders 
you can have a downloader, um, you can enable fail to ban, you can you know, set up your FTP. I have FTP disabled because uh, there's no reason for me to use it. Most of my systems are all, all Linux based, so I can just, you know, SFTP into whatever system I want. You have OpenVPN you can set up with this, um, with this setup. You can have SnapRaid, which I previously was using SnapRaid, so that's kind of cool. Um, the dashboard is something you can kind of configure. You can add other elements. I pretty much already have all the elements on here. So there's nothing that you're not able to see, but you can look at all your services, see what's running, what's not running, your network interfaces, your file systems, how are they doing, all that basic stuff. It's, it's really just simple and straight to the point. Um, and if you were comparing this to, say, Synology, for example, unless you had some kind of business application, um, e even then, even if you had a business application, this is just Debian, and it's going to do everything you want. The only thing that may be something that you'll be missing is some of those applications that Synology offers. Now, in my comparison, Synology does have some... A lot of different stuff like you'd have to install Nextcloud, you'd have to install sync thing or or some other things to to have it be comparable to this the complete offering of synology um so this is more of just a nas and then you can tack other things onto it other open source uh tools and i mean with that said uh, it's good to donate to this stuff. Open source doesn't mean that it's free, although a lot of the times that's the kind of mentality is that everything has to be free. I think a lot of this stuff it should be should be paid for. You should you should definitely donate to the project. There's a lot of talented people that are that are working on this stuff, and their time is valuable. Um, and it's nice to have them working on it so it stays up to date. And you know. Uh, keeps adding features and keeps on improving just give people a, a reward for their dedication and hard work i think is always a good thing so go to the about page this is open media vaults uh, copyright here so now they have open media vault is free there's no warranty and a lot of the times when you're running a business, you need to have that warranty. Somebody that you can complain to, the IT team wants to have that. If they have a problem, they can phone support and know that they're going to get their issues resolved. So that's something to consider. Obviously, you know, Open Media Vault is super easy to install. They, I think they, they provide their own ISO. It's all complete, but you can also install it in different ways. Um, but yeah, I've had a lot of success with it so far. Uh, I've had success with Synology. I haven't really tried FreeNAS very much, but um, yeah, I think a lot of these, uh, a, a lot of the misconceptions with Open Media Vault is probably in the name. It's not just a, a very poor, poor man solution to their NAS. It's just a simple NAS solution that it has a ton of features. It has a plugin system if you want to have uh, extra plugins, but that's not really required, right? So FreeNAS, they have like so many features and so many settings that, um, you know, maybe some people, they really need those things. Maybe they really need to get that stuff dialed in. Um, but a lot of the times, yeah, it's probably not that important. You just need some kind of simple RAID. And this has got to be one of the most co cost-effective ways to go. Um, FreeNAS, you can build your own soft, uh, hardware and then throw the software on and you're going to have, you know, really good experience from what I've heard other people say. Um, but you got to know something about BSD. You have to know, you know, things about BSD to feel 100% comfortable using that where I don't have to relearn any skills. I can just use all of my Linux base knowledge and just hop on Open Media Vault and we're ready to go. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that's what I recommend for anybody who's a Linux a Linux type person. Um, if you don't want to spend a bunch of time relearning new skills for no reason, this is a great solution for your NAS, and it's not locked down at all. You can SSH directly into your system. It's your system. 
you it supports a bunch of different configurations i bought a, a sata uh, pci card pcie card and i threw it in the system it added six additional uh, ports for sata and i still have a bunch of extra expansion that i can do on this very very cheap hardware that cost me you know at the time it was pretty cheap now to buy this uh, setup that I have is probably two, three hundred bucks, not including the hard drives, which are, if you include, depending on which hard drives you get, that's going to be, you know, five hundred thousand, two thousand, just depends. So, um, yeah, this is a great way to go, and I just wanted to show this off because I think it's pretty cool. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later.